Fun facts! My name is Prachi. The Japanese island of Okunoshima is a worldwide tourist attraction because there are thousands of wild bunny rabbits just running around on the streets. And this is a video featuring my April empties. The prevailing theory about where those rabbits came from is that some school children or maybe a European couple brought a few of them over in the 1980s. And since dogs and cats aren't allowed on the island, meaning that there are no real predators for those rabbits, those few bunny rabbits multiplied the way rabbits often do to produce the roughly 1,000 that swarm the island today. Those of you who've been watching my videos know that I usually combine my faves, hates, and empties all into one colossal video at the end of this month. And that's usually been because I don't really have very many empties. This month, however, I used up eight things, which is a bit much to tack on to a video that's already discussing all of my hits and misses for the month. I didn't want to subject all of you to 50 minutes of my blabbering, so I decided to split it up into two shorter videos. So without any further ado, let's get it! All right, so let's get like the most boring empty out of the way. I finished my deodorant. Big whoop, right? It is kind of a big whoop because <laughs> I had such a problem with buying things that I would even buy weird backups of deodorant. Like you would think this would be the only deodorant I have in the house, absolutely not. I have like new unused backup deodorants from different brands that I just bought because I don't know, I wanted to buy something. This was the extent of the problem that I had guys. This is really why I needed to go on a no buy that was fairly comprehensive. So the one that I finished using up this month is by Adidas. It's the Adidas For Women Fitness Fresh deodorant with 0% aluminum. I'm trying to shift away from using antiperspirants and more into deodorants because antiperspirants actually prevent you from sweating and I don't really want that. Like sweating is good for your body. Like if you're sweating, it's usually for a reason. Now I do have a whole brand new antiperspirant from Mitchum that was just lying around my house, unopened and unused. So that's now what I'm currently using. Anyway, this was a fine deodorant. I'm gonna move on. The second thing, which is like a relatively easy empty is the sheet mask. This is from the face shop and it's their mask cream sheet in the radiance type. It's called mask cream because instead of it being soaked in serum, it's soaked in what feels like a night cream. Like it's a heavier, thicker, more occlusive thing. And so I actually like using this more as a last step to seal in everything than as an intermediate serum step, the way I do a lot of other sheet masks. I don't really, know or care about the effectiveness of sheet masks. Sheet masks for me are more psychological, I think, than they are about the actual skincare benefits. I think you need to be using something every day in order for it to be having like a really good impact on your skin. So like I know that the powerhouse skincare items in my routine are like vitamin C, AHA, BHA, retinol products that I'm using every single day. This is not what gives me good skin. However, the act of putting on a sheet mask represents to me like the ability to just take a bunch of time to myself. So I like doing them once a week, once every two weeks or so to genuinely treat myself, to give myself like a luxurious feel and experience. Hannah Louise Poston and Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips just both released collaborative videos on what luxury is to them. And to me, like indulging in a sheet mask, like spending the 25 minutes to take care of my skin is like the epitome of luxury, even though this sheet mask itself is like two or three dollars. That entire spiel is to say that I don't really care that much about the performance of a sheet mask beyond just that it should not be egregious, right? Like it should not be so ill-fitting that it's like sliding all off my face. The fragrance, if there is one, shouldn't bother me. It shouldn't leave my skin feeling sticky or terrible or worse off than it was before because the function of this is to make me feel like I have treated myself and had a luxurious experience. And this fits the bill. For what I want it to do for me, this is a pretty good sheet mask. Do I rely on it to give me radiance the way that it promises? Absolutely not. I have things like vitamin C and niacinamide that are much more robust that give me real radiance and glowing skin. I have like minimum 30 other sheet masks, so obviously I'm not repurchasing anything. 
Along that same category in terms of a thing that I use as a final step to just sort of press a bunch of things in is this little sample size of the Belief Aqua Bomb sleeping mask. So I use the Belief Aqua Bomb and Moisture Bomb moisturizers. I've also used their eye cream before and when I bought a bunch of those products is when I ended up getting this little sample of the Aqua Bomb sleeping mask. This is a really interesting product because is there any left here for me to show? No, but it's like light blue and kind of clear. It's called a jelly pudding mask and that is a pretty accurate assessment of its texture. Like it doesn't feel like a lotion or a cream. It doesn't even sit in here like a lotion or a cream. It really sits kind of like a jello and you can like put in your finger and stir it all around and mess up everything and then if you just let it sit for like an hour or two, it will all flatten out beautifully and look like the top of gelatin. And it's really, really interesting because as you rub it in, it really does feel a little bit like there's like a burst of water in your face. It really does feel like an aqua bomb. Like you really get this like rush of water. And then after a while, it almost forms into that same sort of jelly-like consistency that it is in here, but as a thin film over your skin to sort of lock in all of your skincare steps. It was actually really cool to use and it didn't break me out, but Believe products are insanely expensive. And now that we're transitioning more into summer, I have the Laneige sleeping mask, which is of a much lighter and thinner consistency that I think will actually be better for me than investing in a full size of this. Which real talk, I don't even know if I would ever do because I don't think I wanna be spending belief level money on a sleeping mask. However, it, this was really good while it lasted. And if it's in your budget and you have kind of dehydrated skin that needs more water and moisture, I would recommend maybe checking it out. Like definitely maybe try it on the back of your hand to see if you like the texture of it because the texture of this was really interesting and cool. The next thing I finished off was this cleanser. It was also from the face shop. Um, but it was from their one of their sub brands called Dr. Belmer and it was their daily repair foam cleanser. This is like a mini size that came in like a kit filled with all of their different daily repair products. It was just like a standard foaming cleanser. It came out as a gel, then it lathered up into a foam. I used it a lot as my second cleanse. A little bit went a really long way. It had this really pleasant sort of herbal smell to it. It was good. And I think the full size of this was like well under $20, but I'm not in the habit of spending more than like $10 on a cleanser. So I don't know if I would ever spend like the $15, $16 that I'm sure this is. I also still have like two or three foaming cleansers lying around the house, I think. So there's no need for me to be repurchasing a cleanser right now anyway. The next thing is this body lotion by Lac Hydrin, and it's an AHA body lotion with 12% lactic acid. So I have what's called keratosis pilaris. Some people colloquially call it chicken skin, but I hate that name. So we're going with the official dermatological name, keratosis pilaris. And what that basically means is, one, I'm really prone to like ingrown hairs and stuff. And two, I have sort of like, I don't know if this is visible, but I have sort of like bumpy, textured skin on my arms. And there's no real treatment for keratosis pilaris. There's just managing its appearance and the roughness of its skin. Every single dermatologist I've ever been to has basically just told me that you need to use some form of lactic acid or salicylic acid for the rest of your life in order to manage the appearance of KP on my skin. This was one of the most commonly recommended lactic acid lotions called Lac Hydrin. This is disgusting smelling, y'all. I I have no way in which to describe the smell to you. Like it's not a sulfuric smell, but it's it's bad. Like this is not something I could ever wear and then go out into public. Like the only time I would ever use this is like at night before I went to sleep and that's because I shower in the morning. So before I would go to sleep, I would like slather this on my arms and then go to bed and then wake up and shower to get the stench off. And I think it's because the form of like lactic acid or whatever is ammonium lactate and that must be the thing that's like giving it this smell. This was just terrible to try and use and towards the end of the bottle the smell was so getting to me that I actually just started putting it on my feet instead of on my actual arms because I just couldn't stand it anymore and I will say that putting 12% lactic acid on your feet at night and then putting on socks you end up having really really soft feet so this does its job like it exfoliates 
dead, dry, scaly skin really, really well, but the smell of it, nasty. Now, because I have keratosis pilaris, one of my skincare categories is an acid-based lotion for my body. This is not my last acid-based lotion. I do have one by CeraVe with 2% salicylic acid that I'm using right now, so there's no repurchases necessary for me at this point in time. However, I don't think I'm ever going to repurchase this ever again. Now, the next two things in my empty were in this. This is a contact lens case. I'm not going to be talking about my contact lens as a form of empty. What used to be in here were two different samples of face oils that I had asked for in Sephora. I don't know about y'all, but the Sephora containers spill on me all the time. After the first time I open them when I get home, it seems almost impossible for me to actually close them again without them spilling. And so I often end up transferring whatever's in the Sephora container into like a contact lens case because they're designed to be leak proof. So there were two face oils that I had really, really wanted to try on either side of this. One of them was the Herbivore Lapis face oil. It's blue in color due to the blue tansy oil put into it. And blue tansy apparently has all of these like calming and soothing properties. And that oil seems like really, really hyped up. Like I remember there was a point in time where it was in so many different skincare beauty YouTubers favorites, but it's also 90 Canadian dollars. And people like hyped it up so much that I, a person who I don't particularly enjoy using face oils, I thought for sure that this was going to be the face oil for me because even people who had really oily skin and all that kind of stuff, they all loved it. And they said that the blue tansy helped heal their acne faster. And you know, like all of these like incredible claims that show up on YouTube whenever a thing gets really hyped. One day I finally mustered up the courage to ask for a sample for it in my Sephora. And then I came home and I was super excited and I started using it. And it's really not that different from every other face oil I already own and dislike using. It doesn't sink into my skin a lot faster. It doesn't leave me somehow less greasy. It was fine. It didn't change my life. It smelled very good, that's true. And it was this incredible, beautiful blue color but it was not $90 good. And not only was it not $90 good, but they give you a huge amount of oil for that $90. And initially you're like, oh, that's great, because a lot of companies, they'll only give you 30 milliliters of oil, one fluid ounce, but Herbivore gives you 50 milliliters of oil or 1.7 fluid ounces. So initially you're like, okay, yeah, it's $90, but I'm getting like 70% more oil than I would be getting from all of these other brands. And so then maybe it's not that expensive after all, blah, 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 whatever. Here's the thing. Herbivore is an all natural company. And when they say they're all natural, that means they very, very proudly say that they don't use preservatives in any of their products. Now, if you are a person who has certain allergies to preservatives or you don't want to put any of them on your skin or whatever, that's great, that's fine, I respect your choices. However, I am absolutely not one of those people. I'm one of those people who's like, y'all better be putting preservatives in my skincare and in my makeup because I will be damned if I get up one day and like find mold growing on something that I paid a whole bunch of money for before it's even all the way used up. And if you read the reviews on Sephora and on websites like well.ca and even on Amazon for the herbivore lapis oil, the initial reviews are always really, really rave. And then you will find an edit from several months later that says that people's bottles went off in color or texture. That like six months in when the user was only like halfway through the bottle, it went from being a clear blue color to like cloudy or it started turning more green, or it started turning more brown, and that they basically had to throw out the rest of that oil because it had turned on them. It had either gone rancid or started growing mold or any one of a myriad different things that happens when there are no preservatives and things are just left to let nature have at it. So the scales have fallen from my eyes. Like herbivore lapis is not at all appealing to me. Like the process of using it didn't like blow my mind away. And the fact that there are no preservatives in it is icky to me. I know that seems rare nowadays because people are all like, oh, preservative is bad. But like, honestly, like I'm not trying to be Alexander Fleming here, guys. Like I'm not trying to rediscover penicillin in my like face cream or oil. Put preservatives in my things, 
please. The oil in the other eye of this lens case was the Youth to the People Superberry Hydrate and Glow Oil. Unlike the Herbivore Lapis Oil, which had this like really beautiful jasmine scent, the Youth to the People Superberry Oil had a very cheap dollar store vanilla candle smell. I will however say that I enjoyed using the Youth to the People oil just a little bit more than I did Herbivore Lapis. It seemed to absorb just a bit faster in my skin. It made me look dewy and not greasy, but it's $55 for 30 milliliters and it didn't blow me away that much. I think I've just come to realize that like, I don't like using face oil straight up. My preferred method of using face oil is what I outlined in my anti-haul where I combine face oil with a very watery essence because that seems to be the only method I've ever found to get it to actually fully and nicely absorb into my skin. And if I'm going to be diluting whatever facial oil with a hydrating toner or an essence containing hyaluronic acid, like I don't need a $90 or a $55 face oil. The ones that I have from the ordinary have been serving me just fine. These samples were really, really useful because they kind of burst the bubble of hype that was built around these two products. Like I know that once I burn through all of my existing facial oils, I'm not gonna go purchase either of these. They're not worth it. Alrighty, so that brings us to the final empty and it's not actually an empty at all. I only own two Chanel products. One is their matte eyeshadow quad in Candeur et Experience, and the other is this Illusion d'Ombre. It's a cream eyeshadow. The shade is Mirage. It's this beautiful bronzy color. Is that in focus? I don't even know if that's in focus, but um, it's basically like a very beautiful shimmery goldeny bronze color. This cream eyeshadow is like so special to me. I remember the experience of buying it. I remember the experience of picking it out. It was actually, I think, almost two years ago exactly because I bought this after I'd finished my final exams two years ago in the month of April. And as a treat to myself, I used Shoppers Drug Mart points, which are the equivalent of like Ulta points if you live in the US where you can take bonus points in a store and convert them for cash. I used those points to buy this cream eyeshadow as well as that Chanel quad. Like I'd saved my points for years and years and years and I splurged and spent them on these two things. And I have a rule when it comes to the expiration of products. I call it the milk rule. And here's how the milk rule works. Let's say I buy like a carton of milk or a jug or a gallon or a bag, depending on where you live in this world. Wherever you are, they stamp an expiration date on the milk. That date is an excellent guideline. However, let's say I buy a carton of milk and I've been drinking it for the last two, three weeks and I open the fridge today and I, pull out the milk and I pour some out in a glass and then it smells funny or the texture has gone off or maybe it looks weird, like a different color or I can see like spots that aren't white in it. And then I go to look at the carton to see that the official date on the milk says that it's not going to expire for another three days. I'm going to trust my sense of smell, my ability to discern texture and my own eyesight far more than I am the fact that there's a label on the carton that says technically the milk's not supposed to expire for another three days. Similarly, if I've been drinking milk every single day this week and then I open up the fridge today and I go to pour out a glass of milk and then I realize, oh my God, the carton says that the milk expired yesterday, but the milk smells perfectly fine, looks perfectly fine and doesn't really have a texture change, I'm probably gonna drink the milk. You might not, but I'm saying I would, because once again, I'm gonna rely on smell, texture, and appearance, and put a lot more weight on that than I am on a stamped label. So those three like criteria, smell, texture, and appearance, are what I call the milk test. And they're also how I kind of gauge whether a makeup product is still good to use or not. And I'm usually very, very good at sort of obeying the milk test with my makeup and throwing out makeup that has drastically changed texture or appearance or smell, except for with this eyeshadow. The Illusion d'Ombre say 12 months on the back of them. That's kind of a scam. Really, after about six months, you begin to see a very, very noticeable texture change. Because when I first got this eyeshadow, it was very distinctly wet feeling, and you just sort of had to skim your finger over the top very lightly in order for a whole bunch of color to come off. Six months in, it was beginning to be a lot more dried out. 
And I don't store my makeup near an air vent or anything like that. Like my makeup is stored in a cool, dry, dark place. So there was no earthly reason for this to have dried out as fast as it did. According to the milk test, I should have thrown this out over a year ago, but I haven't because it was expensive. And I refused to believe that this thing that I had hyped up for so long, this thing that I had believed was such an exquisite and stunning piece of makeup in this world was actually kind of a disappointment. This has never been a disappointment in terms of its performance or its appearance, but it is so disappointing in its longevity as a product. Considering how expensive these are, because these are luxury products, the fact that they don't even really last for the 12 months that they're supposed to is so disappointing. And I didn't want to admit that to myself. And so even though this is long dried out, like this was so dry that it literally cracked in half right down the middle. I've basically been performing CPR on this eyeshadow for over a year now. I keep adding drops of oil and then it'll revive it for like two or three weeks. I'll add in some eye drops and then it'll revive it for maybe like a couple extra days. And then we're right back to where we started, which is this like very dried out flaky eyeshadow. But something has changed in me this month because I've come to realize that every single time I reach for this bronzy eyeshadow, there are a whole bunch of other well-performing bronze eyeshadows in my collection that I'm neglecting. I'm losing out on the opportunity to use the many other beautiful and exquisite things in my collection before they themselves go bad. Every single time I want to reach for anything even remotely bronze, I guilt trip myself into using this one because this was so expensive and because I'm determined to get my money's worth out of it. And so I just push every other beautiful bronzy gold thing I own to the side to keep trying it with this. You know those like hospital dramas where the wife is like dying somehow, like she's in a hospital bed cause she's like really sick. And then all of a sudden she flatlines and they're calling a code and then they're, you know, using the paddles and the defibrillator and all this kind of stuff. And they keep trying to like revive her and bring her back to life. And there's like this one rookie resident and it's like his first week at work. And he's like, obviously like never lost a patient before. Plus the husband's in the background yelling, save my wife, save my wife. And so there's a resident doctor who literally just got out of medical school like three weeks ago, he's got like the paddles out and he just keeps trying to revive the dying wife like you're only really supposed to defibrillate a patient maybe like three times and he's like on charge number seven because he's like god damn it I'm not gonna lose another patient and then finally like the older more experienced attending doctor shows up and puts his hand on that like rookie doctor's shoulder and he's like it's time to call it she's gone that was me with this Chanel eyeshadow I was the rookie doctor who like just would not admit that she was dead. I need to just call it. Time of death, 11.23 p.m. April 26, 2019. God, I'm so melodramatic. Well, that was it ladies and gentlemen. Those were all of my April empties. I hope you found that video entertaining to watch. And as always, I hope you have a great upcoming week. And if your upcoming week ends up becoming messy and imperfect, I hope that you're still able to create and experience some truly beautiful moments. Bye. But you gotta be there for me too.